this evening. They'll be rocking and rolling in Jackson a week from Saturday. They'll be doing it to the beat of a different drum, heavy metal music. The switch has some people in Jackson concerned the groups promote satanic worship. Well, we all know that adolescence is a tough time, but it's amazing to see the lengths people go to express their frustration. It's yes, sad. Yeah, it's amazing, but uh, I think parents have to really pay more attention to what these kids are listening to. Yeah. His mother says he was a normal, happy boy until he became obsessed with black metal music. They become almost absorbed in it. It's a surprising for us. They have to have it. I hate it so much that I want to see what it's done to our family. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Hawk and Load Case Files, and I'm your host, Hawk and Load. And today, I am bringing you the case of 15-year-old Elise Poller. If you know about this case already, I implore you to stay with me for a while. A lot of channels here on YouTube and even legacy media outlets have covered this case, and it's been reported to be the inspiration for the 2009 blockbuster smash hit, Jennifer's Body. She's just covering. It's not that impressive. But do you have to undermine everything that I do? You are such a player hater. You're a jerk. Wow, nice insult, Hannah Montana. I'm surprised it didn't snag an Oscar that year. They've done a great job at detailing the tragedy, but they all seem to have this boogeyman telling of Heavy Metal's contribution to the story. I'm making this video to serve two purposes. To explain and honor the tragic loss of life of one Royal Grande teenager, and to dispel a bit of the satanic panic leftovers of the 80s and 90s in regards to my fellow metalheads. It's an argument as old as bad acts themselves. Does art, be it in the form of music, movies, or video games, turn otherwise normal children into cold-blooded killers? I wanna give a new perspective to this case and maybe even change a few minds. On the night of July 22nd, 1995, 15-year-old Elise Poller was lured out of her house by three boys she knew from school. She met up with them a quarter mile from her home to a secluded location where she was murdered and then raped. Her killers believed that a virginal sacrifice to Satan would be the ultimate sin against God and grant them fame, fortune, and musical ability. But all it came with was paranoia, guilt, and tragedy. Satanic panic is a moral panic stirred by reports of over 12,000 unsubstantiated instances of satanic ritual abuse reported over the United States during the 80s and 90s and persists to this day. The panic began in the 1980s with a book by Canadian author Michelle Smith and her psychiatrist husband, Lawrence Pazder. The now discredited book was written from an autobiographical perspective and is the first modern claim that child abuse was linked to satanic rituals. Panic spread across the United States during the 80s with countless children essentially being implanted with false memories of satanic ritual abuse by crackpot head shrinks. With that in mind, allow me to give you a brief history of heavy metal. In 1968, four young lads from Birmingham, England formed the band Black Sabbath. With a collective fascination with the occult and the low down-tuned guitars, Black Sabbath unleashed a litany of amazing songs and albums. The band is credited as the first heavy metal band in the genre. With influences from hard rock and punk bands, the genre grew to be not only a powerhouse of music, but a symbol for the rebellious teenagers of the 1970s. A symbol that has resonated with people in every decade that followed it. And as such, the music only got heavier and heavier, with themes that grew darker and darker, I think, to break the chains of the conservative population who were hardened by World War II in the decades that followed. In the 1980s, Tipper Gore, wife of then-Senator Al Gore, went on a crusade against heavy metal and its often dark adult themes. Parents Music Resource Center, or PMRC, was founded by Tipper Gore and other Washington wives and is responsible 
for the parental advisory label found on explicit music. Honestly, it only served to signal to teens which albums were the good ones. In December of 1985, two men, Raymond Belknap and James Vance, spent a day drinking and listening to Judas Priest's Stained Glass album. Later in the evening, they both attempted to take their own lives with shotguns. Belknap died immediately, while Vance survived and passed three years later. The band was sued, being accused of planting subliminal messaging in their music, causing the actions of the two men. Heavy Metal was the biggest boogeyman of the 1980s, while also being the uncontested king of music. The conservative Christian ways that proliferated the satanic panic were the very same being rebelled against with heavy metal. By the 1990s, the heavy metal scene had evolved to include death metal, with its precursor, thrash metal, still reigning amongst the youth. In all actuality, the satanic themes of bands like Slayer were meant to be uncomfortable for the strict parents of the 80s and 90s to hear. Heavy metal in itself is meant to target the rebellion and aggression of the fans that it attracts and outlet it in a healthy way. The genre is an art form like any other. It is a mere expression and release. Arroyo Grande, California is a small coastal town with historic sites, suburban sprawls, and rural farmland. With a population of roughly 17,000 people, nothing of note tends to happen here. In 1995 especially, violent crime was nearly non-existent. The citizens of Arroyo Grande lived their lives with relative safety and comfort. But on a summer night in July 1995, a shocking event would occur unknown to its residents until eight months later. Elise Pauler was born on April 24, 1984 in Arroyo Grande, California. His parents, Lisa Ann and David Pollard. They and Elise's two younger siblings lived a relatively normal middle-class life in a sleepy town. As a child, Elise attracted attention with her blonde hair and blue eyes. She aspired to be a beauty queen and actress, and she had to look for it. She was an ambitious, smart, and thriving young girl, and had her whole life ahead of her, a life I'm sure she would have gone on to succeed in. While she was a well-behaved teenager and incredibly ambitious, she wasn't one to shy away from a bit of teenage recreation. Normal teenager things, like sneaking out and smoking. Elise had a close group of friends, but was friendly with nearly everyone including the misfit crowd of headbangers that seems to exist in every school and every generation. This would unfortunately, and ultimately, lead to her brutal end. Hatred. That was the name of an aspiring death metal band made up of Arroyo Grande High School metalheads Royce Casey, Jacob DeLashmet, and Joseph Fiorella. Well, they were Arroyo Grande High School students until each of them ran into their own turbulence with the institution. According to an article from Living Magazine, quote, Casey, DeLashmet, and Fiorella were all troubled teens. Casey had been expelled from school, so he had to attend a continuation school. Fiorella was also being homeschooled after having problems at the public high school. Delashman was also expelled from school for drug possession and swearing at teachers. Fiorella, the youngest of the group, began to listen to and study Slayer's lyrics. He took them in as if to educate him on some greater existence. He became obsessive and entranced by them and began to daydream about committing the terrible acts described in their lyrics. They began to study the occult and Satanism, searching for the ultimate sin against God, and decided killing a blonde-haired, blue-eyed virgin would be exactly what he was looking for. He was a boy obsessed with all things Satan and Satanism. He began communicating online in groups and forums about it. 
The boys began taking acid in an attempt to see the other side. He led the group in breaking into graveyards, contemplating which ones to rob. The deeply disturbed group of boys were in deep with something far beyond simple Slayer lyrics. And with that, Fiorella targeted an unsuspecting Elise, bringing Delashment and Casey into his sociopathic fantasy with him. He was obsessed and taken in by her, even before his satanic plan came to be. They began by acquainting themselves with her, hanging out around places where she would be, following her movements and routines for months. According to Casey, Fiorella was completely locked in on Elise as the perfect sacrifice. Deciding that the time was right, the boys lured Elise to a spot on the mesa, and one of the boys descended, enticing her to follow him, which she did. Fiorella then tossed the boys a knife and began to chant, Do it! Do it! But the overwhelmed teen froze up and couldn't go through with it. Elise, thinking it was some kind of joke, didn't report it to her parents. After the failed attempt, they continued to scheme about what they should do. Despite the lack of courage the first time, they were determined to go through with their sacrifice. They believed that this offering would please Satan and grant them supernatural abilities to play, and that they would be so good that a record deal was certain. A few months later, they would get another chance at their sickening task. On the night of July 22, 1995, the Paulers were gathered together in the living room, watching a movie together. The phone rang, and on the other end were the three boys. They wanted to speak to Elise. After a short call, Elise hung up and abruptly disclaimed that she was tired and was going to bed. Looking into her eyes, her father David knew something was up, but suppressed it and told her goodnight. It was a moment that haunts him to this day, as it is the moment he believes he could have saved her. Once alone in her room, she snuck out of the bedroom window and made her way to meet up with the group to smoke and hang out, thinking she'd be back soon. Aller, Casey, Fiorella, and Delashment, after smoking and relaxing a bit, made their way to a eucalyptus grove on the Napomo Mesa. Once settled, Casey grabbed her, pinning her down as Delashment removed his belt. He wrapped it around her neck, pulling tight as she struggled and fought. Fiorella produced a hunting knife plunging it into her neck over and over again. With none of the wounds fatal, she screamed for her mother and prayed out loud for God to save her. But all she got was beaten as she lay in a eucalyptus grove, bleeding to death. Once she was dead, the boys took turns stabbing the body. They then ripped and violated her corpse, reveling in the vicious act they just committed. They all then departed the scene, leaving her in that spot for eight months, during which Delashment would revisit multiple times and continue to rip her body as it decomposed, according to Casey and Fiorella. Elise Pollard suffered an agonizing death. It was slow. None of us should ever die screaming, not least of which, this poor girl. When the Pollard family realized Elise was not in her room or with friends, they notified the police and authorities opened a missing person investigation. They spoke to everyone and conducted searches, but nothing was found and the case went cold for nearly a year. After the murder, the boys would go on to brag and tell at least two people what they had done. And it's even alleged that Fiorella told his mother that he had sex with a dead body, but they all brushed it off as a sick joke. Casey, who says he was struggling with his beliefs before and after the murder, began to keep a journal. He would often write how he was fighting with, quote, the other side. Three months after the murder, Casey wrote the quote, I'm fighting on the other side now, allied with the darkened souls. Satan's raised and shall conquer and reign. However, as the months passed and his relationship with Fiorella and Delashment began to falter, he started to have a change of heart. He felt immense guilt and, according to him, had finally crossed to that other side he had been fighting and became a Christian. 
He feared that his change of heart was sensed by the other boys and that they may kill him to keep him quiet. With this, Casey went to the police and confessed everything, telling authorities every last detail of that night and leading them to Elisa's body. Her family, while grief-stricken and horrified, could finally lay her to rest. Once Casey led authorities to her body, he and his accomplices were arrested and charged with her murder. This is where Casey laid out their motivations, telling the detectives about their satanic obsessions. The Lashment, when interrogated, denied having any ties to Satanism, but cited Slayer as an inspiration for the killing, specifically the song Altar of Sacrifice. High priest awaiting dagger in hand, spilling the pure virgin blood. Satan slaughter ceremonial death. Answer is every command. Once this was released to the press, the national media was set alight with sensational headlines pointing blame at Slayer and the culture of headbangers across the country. This is where I want to cut in with a bit of perspective. As I stated at the beginning of the video, heavy metal is an art. It's like any other music, making a connection. A deep connection with your emotions. Whether you're into Motorhead or Doja Cat, Harry Styles or Cannibal Corpse, surely you can relate to the feeling you get when the music makes that connection. It is a release. It is not a call to action. I respect however it is you feel in this regard, and I think a conversation can be had about it. But as a metalhead myself, and like almost any other of my kind, we are not violent people, in part because of the release that heavy metal gives us. The young lads, ages ranging from 14 to 16 at the time of their trials, were all tried as adults and convicted of first-degree murder. As per an agreement through a plea deal, they were sentenced to 25 and 26 years to life respectively and were shipped off to their separate cages where they belonged. The Pollard family was understandably shattered by the loss and discovery of their beloved Elise. The mental health of David Pollard, Elise's father, declined so rapidly that he ended up losing his job and foreclosed on the family home. The Pollard family has spent the last 26 years trying to cope and move forward, but unfortunately, they've been surrounded by nothing but constant reminders of their daughter's murder in the form of multiple lawsuits against Slayer. The Pollard sued Slayer, citing their lyrics were to blame for inspiring the murder of their daughter and described it as being harmful to minors but a judge, lacking legal precedent, threw out all of the cases as Slayer's lyrics fell under the First Amendment. And as heartbroken for the Pollard family as I am, I am in full support of this decision. It is up to you to control yourself and your actions. Slayer is far from the first to recite violent words to the masses, and I feel it's important to hold self-accountability as the gold standard. Art and media are constantly exposing the public to violence. Criminal Minds isn't inspiring ideas for would-be serial killers. Romeo and Juliet aren't inciting forbidden love stories across time. We are our minds, and our decisions are on us. Our consequences are ours to accept. The devil isn't to blame. The person is. Recent parole hearings and probation reports say the boys are deeply remorseful about what they've done and spoken about how the family must feel. They say they wish they could take it back, but that's typically what all convicted murderers say when they have a shot at getting parole. In July of 2016, Casey was denied parole. In 2021, however, his parole was granted by two California parole commissioners who was sent off to the desk of Governor Gavin Newsom. After a report from the prosecutor, however, Governor Newsom reversed the decision. In the months leading up to the hearing with the knowledge of his bid for release, the Pollard family themselves were at peace and forgave Casey for his involvement. Casey has spent his stay in prison trying to improve and rehabilitate and has been a model prisoner for the past 26 years. His next hearing is in 2024. The Lashman and Fiorella have been denied parole at each of their hearings. It is unlikely that they are released anytime soon. I would like to take a moment and extend my deepest sympathies to the Pollard family. I am truly heartbroken over what happened to such a beautiful soul. At least Pollard was at the starting line of her adult life, ready to take on the world, and a disturbed trio of barely developed men snuffed out that fire. May she rest in peace. 
It's an argument as old as bad acts themselves. Does art, be it in the form of music, movies, or video games, turn otherwise normal children into cold-blooded killers? To me, at least, it appears that these boys were disturbed long before and well after committing their sacrifice. Between their expulsions from school or their fixation on satanic ideas, what they needed was help. No parent ever thinks their child capable of murder, but for the families of these three boys, the stark reality was that they were cold-blooded killers. Parents, not only those who are in PMRC, but other parents who are concerned um, here and across the country about the development of new trends in music and the lyrics that go along with that music are naive or, or um, uh, somehow missing the point. Well, I have really to... not that serious a problem for this country and our young people. That's like sort of a multiple question. I don't think they're naive, and I don't think that at times they're unduly worried but I do think sometimes I take it overly serious. I mean, there are monster movies on all the time. They've been going on for ages, and people watch a monster movie, and they get scared, and they walk away, and it was just a movie. Rock and roll, in many times, is the same thing, trying to get an effect either of laughter, of sadness. A lot of the heavy metal bands are trying to scare people and just make them just like a horror movie. Vincent Price isn't getting uh, have problems because he's done all these monster pictures. He's just an actor. I'm not going to say I'm just an actor, but I am entertaining people, and a lot of these bands are entertaining people. And when they were reading some of these lyrics before, I couldn't help but laugh. I mean, I hadn't heard some of them, but some of the lyrics were ridiculously ridiculous. I mean, you know, and, and a kid, even a kid reading that, I think, was, oh my God, what's going on? You know, it's ridic ridiculous. It's the only word I can think of. Some of the lyrics. We are a society desensitized to violence, thanks to the rapid growth of technology and our fixation on the human condition. We often seek out violent imagery and stories. We wonder how someone can get to that point, and it's a position that most of us will never be able to empathize with. But I assure you, heavy metal is not your problem. And for some of us, it is our salvation. And that, my friends, was the tragic case of Elise Pollard. Let me know what you think about and how you feel in the comments. If there's a person, subject, or shit show you'd like me to cover, leave them down there too. Blah, 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 blah. Like and subscribe, you know the deal. This was the Hawk and Load Case Files. I'm Hawk and Load, and until next time, just, just get out of here. You want to be in the video? Are you trying to be in my YouTube video, Bubba? Mac wants to be in the video. Can you say hello? Oh,